Hello everybody, thank you for joining me for another One Man Review. Today I'm going to be looking at a number of books, so this is a review of a publisher rather than just one artist or one book. I had previously looked at Kingdom by John McNaught, which was the first book I'd ever seen from No Brow, no Brow Press, and I, I didn't need, I've never even heard of this company, but I was so impressed by the quality of the print job on Kingdom and the quality of art, I said, I gotta check out what else No Brow Press has done. When I started looking at their online catalog, I thought, man, all of this looks good. This is a bunch of amazing artists I've never even heard of. Um, I gotta dig into this. So I got a whole bunch of books from them. I didn't get everything they've done, but I'm pretty much going to be now. They have kids books um, and like an illustration magazine and graphic novels. So I'm probably not going to be going out and grabbing the kids books, but it's going to be really hard for me to not just go grab every graphic novel they have. And I will definitely, it'll take me a while to dip into the back catalog, I'm sure. But um, pretty much anytime I see a new project coming from No Brow, I'm going to grab it. Uh, the quality of art is astonishing to me. And a lot of the artists are people I've never, like, I've never heard of any of these artists. I've never seen anything else by them. Um, when I start looking them up, I don't see other books by them. Finding some of them on Instagram. But every one of them is a very accomplished artist with a, a singular voice, a developed voice, coming out the gate with, like, great projects right out the gate. So I have no idea where No Brow Press is finding all of these people, but it's a, a stellar catalog of artists and just the print quality of all of their stuff is stellar as well. The production quality of the books is great. So I'm going to go through a number of books. These are kind of in order of like how much I like the books. I liked all of them, but the, the progressively as I'm showing them to you are things I liked better and better and better. So starting off, there's two small books here that are part of uh, what No Brow Press says is their 17 by 23 project which is uh, to help young graphic novelists um, tell a story in an economic format, and then this is in the hopes to act as a springboard for a more ambitious project. So j just getting these younger artists some exposure. The fact that these are young artists that, like, quote, need exposure or, or help getting their work out there is crazy to me because visually they're so accomplished already. I mean, these feel like people who have been doing this for a while. So this is Vacancy by Jin Lee. Um, with these short one-offs, the stories, they're good, you know, but they're not like the, the best story I've ever read. But the art's always so fantastic that it's like, who really cares? Um, they're good stories. They're not bad. It's just, you know, this is a first thing and you have 30 pages or something. Uh, this one is about characters who leave the comfort of their fenced off little backyard uh, and they find out that the world's more scary and dangerous on the outside and then they come home so you know it's an under understandable story none of the stories push into like what in the hell is going on um yeah it's a good understandable story but not the deepest thing i've ever read beautiful art a lot of this stuff looks like adventure time to me so I don't know if these are people who are working on Adventure Time. They're part of like that Michael DeForge set where they're working in cartoons and and then coming and doing comics. I, I don't know, but it, these definitely look like people who have been professionals for a while. Um, Golem Chick by William Exley is, again, super cool, super singular art style, really great colors, great no, no brow press. I can't I can't even pronounce it. No brow press production um this one is basically a kid uses uh some materials to build a golem and then the golem actually no the golem helps the kid build a fort sorry it's been a while since i've read some of these i've been getting them slowly so i could do a do one big video um but just like a kid in his golem and then the golem trashes the town and the town gets all mad uh, so again, a real simple story, um, but very, very promising artists, both of these, William Exley and Jin Lee. 
and I do, I do hope they do longer work. Um, the the one I've been waiting for, I got a lot of them uh, back in August, but I knew this one was was coming, so I've been waiting for this one to do the review. Uh, How to Pick a Fight by Lara Kamenoff. Again, really sophisticated artist with a really unique visual style. I'm not so big on this like computer done spray paint look. I think the style looks better when she leaves it just like because her cartooning's so good. So when it's just these flat colors like this, I like the artwork quite a bit better. Um, but you know that's just a personal preference thing. It adds a lot of texture to the pages. It just seems fakey fakey to me. But the cartooning and the rest of it's very sophisticated. This is about this young guy, Jimmy, here with this amazing haircut. Um, him and his grandmother love professional wrestling, and he's going to go off and become a boxer. I don't know why he's going to become a boxer when, when they're into the professional wrestling, but runs away from home and is going to go try and become a professional boxer. And throughout his journey meets a number of, I don't want to say like mentor figures, but kind of would be the way to say it. And they're all basically encouraging him to not be a fighter, to just chill out. And the story, this one, it's a little rambling. Like it kind of just goes from scenario to scenario. And there's one like subplot that wraps up in a nice way. But the overall plot structure is pretty loose by the end still. You know, the conclusion of the story is is pretty loose in that regard. Um, so that left me a little unsatisfied with the, the narrative of this book. But really fun read, and there's a lot of these type of moments in the book that are visually really compelling um, that, that kept me excited to be reading the book. It's interesting that they've got this red printed on everything, but there's moments in the book where that goes away. It seems like such an intentional thing to try and create a red, not the spine, but the the red on the pages here. And then to have that disappear from time to time is a little weird. It definitely sets scenes apart as being different from the structure. But even like the printing of this one barely has any red on the corner and this one has big red. It's not even all the way around. Um, so this is the only time I've ever in a no-brow press book had an issue with production. It seems so intentional. I don't know why. It, it, to me, I, I, the red, black, and white with that red border is kind of a harsh artistic choice. And then to have it not be consistent throughout um, it was a little bit jarring. So I, probably out of all of their books I've got, this is the least well produced i think also because the art was made on the computer um, or however the artist prepared the art it doesn't have the crispness of the rest of their productions but it's still a good book and this is still i think a very promising creator who's going to go on to develop their language even better you know I, I think this part of their language is where it really works and hopefully um, they'll continue to do works and continue to develop so uh, someone I'm going to be watching, Laura, Laura Kamenoff. Really excited to see what else they do. Now we're moving into their hardcover books, which is where the production values really kick off uh, into something phenomenal. Always have this fabric on the side, oftentimes with gold stamping. That's really nice, so they look really good on the shelf. Pretty much everything No Brow does is kid-friendly as well. They have a line of of kid books and so i'm imagining those kid books are also equally phenomenally produced like illustrated kids books not comics books but all of their books are kid friendly as well at least the ones that that i have read uh, this book geish a matter of life and death this feels like well I, it is part one of a, an ongoing series um, by alexis deacon they explain that geish is a gaelic word i believe that means spirit um, this is a nice fantasy story where there's a chief for a town that is dying and needs to be replaced. And so 50 people are summoned. Most of them want to replace the chief, but you have one character who's like, mm, why am I here? Um, and then they are put into a competition where they're going to be fighting for who who's going to be chief next. 
And most, uh, like I said, most of them want it. And they get sent out, woo, like by magic, into different parts of the world and they're given different tasks. Some of them come together over the course of it to complete their tasks and some of them go it alone. If they don't complete their tasks by a certain time, they'll die. So it's got a really good fantasy narrative to it. Better than most fantasy books that I've seen lately. Um, still has some of the genre tropes and stuff like that, which make it a little bit more predictable than I would like. But within that, I think a really beautiful, again, really unique, very developed art style. Like this artist knows what they're about and they know how to do it. Uh, and and for the type of story it is, it's it's an exceptional little fantasy story. So I quite look forward to reading the rest of this series. I look forward to having it on my shelves, um, flipping through it. Beautiful work. And let's see. Let's say volume two coming soon. Don't know when. But I imagine this will be a, quite a large series given the setup. Here's a really interesting one. How to Survive in the North by Luke Healy. This is, according to the description, um, true life historical expeditions of Ada Blackjack and Robert Bartlett with a fictional story. And the structure of the book for me was a little confusing at first, but it pays off in, in a way where you figure out, okay, this is what's going on. So it starts with these three different scenes here. And you realize that these are happening, as you go on, you realize that they're happening in different times. So there are two expeditions up into the north. This was a expedition by boat that failed. And then you have a second expedition um, retracing those, those steps, kind of, or going back out to the, the point where the boat failed, I think is what was going on in that one. Again, it's been a couple months since I've read these. Um, and then you have the modern day, which is the fictional story of a professor who's been put on a mandatory sabbatical for having an affair with a student, or at least being rumors of the affair have kind of messed up his, uh, his work situation. And you can see that those are color coded. They each have a different color. So you, you know when you're in a scene. Um, and the way throughout the book that those three stories interweave is really interesting because the fictional story is on his sabbatical, he spends a lot of time in the library researching these two. I haven't gone and done research, but supposedly um, real life tales that the artist wanted to, to retail here. Um, art style is really nice, clean line, nothing bombastic but really beautiful, really good sense of rhythm throughout the pages, the really nice color choices, the having the different times set with different different colors is really nice. So as you're flipping through the book, your eye kind of adjusts to one color scheme, and then as you switch over into the different timeline, then you get refreshed. So you're con there's like a rhythm throughout the book, too, of the colors changing. So very like clear, competent storytelling. And then even though it's not super bombastic, there's a beauty to it all because of the way everything spans out over the pages and the rhythm of the color changes I, I found very pleasing. So it's a, it's a really interesting narrative structure too, I think, to, to have those three stories grinding against each other and, and cycling. And then there's a cool time trick thing too where... As you go later in the book, you realize that each of these is probably about three quarters of the way through their own story. So you loop back to this set of spreads here later in the book, and then the story moves forward from there. So they're kind of giving you like the height of, of each story, the emotional height of each story, and then telling you how they got there, and then you know coming down to the conclusion of each story. So yeah, here you can see there's that same two page spread repeated and then you get to find out okay well what happened from there so really sophisticated writing really simple but sophisticated art um, i definitely rec recommend this one it's it's a very complete package and i look forward to anything else uh well pretty much all these artists do but luke keely's on the list 
Now, uh, this is where the books start to really take up. Not that any of the previous books are bad, but with this book, The King of Birds by Alexander Utkin, which is part of a larger series called the Gamayun Tales. I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's a series of stories that are based on Rus uh, Russian folklore. I don't know. It, it seems like kind of, and, and he even credits Mike Mignola as, as an influence or someone that he's thanking here. So it seems that he's taking these old Russian, Ru I can't, I cannot talk today, old Russian folk tales and combining them into a larger cohesive narrative. But it's a little hard to tell uh, because I've only read the first volume of this, but that's what it seems like to me, that there's going to be one big story that's told with these smaller stories. This is um, the type of paper that is in most of their books. It's a really thick, like, matte, I think it's a non-coated paper, and the paper almost has, I don't know if you can see it, but it almost has, like, the the fibers are so evident that they become a bit pearlescent, and they add this this sense to the ink that it's like tactile. So in this case, the artist's art looks like it's done with pastels. I don't know if it was done on a computer, but it looks like they're done with pastels to me, um, or it has, it has that feeling. And then because of the print quality and the richness of the colors, I mean, ugh, they're so intense. Um, that was a good, uh, not a bad, uh, like the heat of that orange is so intense. And then the paper, the way they mix with the paper, almost feels like it's actual pastels on paper. It doesn't look like ink. Uh, it feels so material. So for this art especially, it's just, oh, it's, it's really beautiful production quality. Um, the reason I think this might be a merging of tales is it starts out with kind of one story. And then it says, oh, okay, well, that, that's how a small apple started a big war, but we're going to get back to that eventually. And then it goes into this story that kind of wraps up within this volume. So I think that's going to be the structure throughout the series. Don't know. Really look forward to getting all of them and reading them all at once. Um, but this has a smaller story in it that's, that's very clear, that's a pretty typical like folktale structure where a character has to go on a quest and accomplish three tasks. They get taken uh, to three different realms, the copper, silver, and gold realms, and uh, they're kind of interacting with these godlike entities. And I've just such a, yeah, this, this artist knows what they're doing. They've developed their style. There doesn't feel like any seeking for style in this. I don't know what this artist has done before this, uh, but obviously something this is a crazy thing to have as as your first your first project um, phenomenal visuals phenomenal colors just so many moments where I'm like man I've never seen comics like this before and I want more I want more comics like this I think this is what we've no brow press seems to be getting what a lot of us have been hoping for all along I think um, their, their stories do tend to be geared more towards children, so I think maybe there's probably a set of people who think, well, it's just fairy tales and folklore and stuff like that. It's not really serious pieces of literature, but they, they do have some of those, and we'll take a look at one. But visually, I think the variety of what comics can look like, Nobrow is pushing that in a way that I'm not familiar with. And the, the, the level of... like visual accomplishment in these is off the charts. Some some places like Fanographics, you'll get some really visually sophisticated books and then a lot of stuff that's got nice stories but is rough. These are these are uh, kind of on the other side of that equation. Visually really sophisticated um, and the, the stories are more fun. Hopefully we'll get to a point where we're getting both. Um, Dilraj Mann's Dalston Monsters. This is, again, really uh, such a cool-looking book and a really fun, like, futuristic world where monsters... And I think this is probably going to be part of a, a larger series of books, too. But these really cool monsters, really well-colored, 
uh, are occupying the city and people have formed gangs around different alliances with different monster sets and these characters are going out and looking for their friend um, through through this world that's being built. It feels like a world that the artist knows a lot about and they're not telling me too much about it, which I really like. They're letting me get it uh, as I follow the characters through the story. I feel like there's a lot more to explore here, so I hope this isn't a one-off. Um, it's it's pretty much just builds up to like a cool monster fight. There's a really cool like little twist at the end, which is really nice. So it's a it's a quick read, but really fun read. And you can see the colors in this are amazing. The print quality is amazing. Same like pearlescent quality. Same same nice heavy paper. They I think they use the same paper on all of their projects. I've already told Sean, I said, we need to find out where these are being printed. All of them are being printed in Latvia. So we need to find out what this printing press in Latvia is and what this paper is they have. Cause I, re I really want to do a project on with this, with this printing press. Here's a map of like all the different gangs and their alliances with the different monsters. Um, and these are the characters now. Okay. Well, we got to go through all these territories and we're going to have fights with all these different gangs really cool rhythm yeah really fun book phenomenal art i don't want to give away too much but cool twist at the end so i'm hoping that they're setting up more more works from here um this this last scene suggests that there's more to come but there's not a like hey volume two coming soon type of thing so i don't know um I'll definitely, yeah, like with all these artists, be looking more from Der Rajman. These last three books here are, the up up till now, I would say these are all highly recommended books. These last three, I think, are must-have books. So Map of Days by Robert Hunter is a little, like, fable or allegory kind of creation myth story. Um, the whole book feels like it was hand printed like this feels like a hand printed screen print um, again on that same really nice paper so it starts with a creation myth basically these two entities the earth and the sun form and draw all this stuff around them and the earth falls in love with the sun and is drawing the sun towards itself and as the sun gets too close it's getting too hot for for all of the uh all of the creatures on earth it's drawing the sun too close and then you you switch into it seems like okay some totally different story um it's about a kid who's who's staying with i believe his grandfather you get these awesome rhythmic pages like this something that i keep talking about on the channel and and something that i'm going to i'm going to be stealing this type of approach uh for for my story that i'm working on now stuff like this is awesome like where there's tangents between these things, so the panels all interlink together. Uh, like having the three against four here, so this is like one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, four, but that's stretched out. So it's so musical like that. It's obviously very connected to the idea of time as well. So the idea of rhythm and periodicity or having two against three here. Um, again, you have like a one, two, three against a larger three, and this is taking up two of those. Uh, that all seems really important for the story because the when the kid goes to visit his grandfather, the house is full of clocks, these giant grandfather clocks. And grandpa goes around and very carefully adjusts the clock each day with this key that he's got. And the kid eventually makes it into like this locked room and sees this old map. Um, of this like giant head in this mechanical contraption here and gets real curious so works out to steal grandpa's key and then sneaks down through this door in the clock and finds that creature from the creation myth the the giant head and you find out that uh, they basically trap this giant head down here the earth and are having a fake sun a fake son uh, so that they, <laughs> that he won't be calling to his lover and drawing her to earth to and accidentally causing the earth to get burnt um, 
the, so that's the gist of the story. And by the end, I think it's kind of like a creation myth for the tides, uh, the idea of the tides. But I mean, you can you can see this is just visually stunning work, like an artist who's already at the peak of their game. Colors, design, layout, storytelling. This one works more like an illustrated book where the text is separated off. So a, a different type of narrative structure to the comic, or at least interaction between the, the words and the pictures. Um, but it works really well. I mean, master level stuff. It's a must-have book. Something that you absolutely want to have on your shelf. Yeah, and then it becomes a, it becomes like a creation myth kind of for the structure of tides but man anything else i can find by robert hunter will absolutely be snatching that up um this book here skip by molly mendoza story's a little weird and wacky and is a setup just for the art to like the artist to be able to play uh it, it's it's two characters from different dimensions that wind up going on a dimension hopping tour to try and get home basically uh this character here is left alone by their guardian figure and is kind of striving to go out and find the guardian um and goes for a swim and again i mean look at the this is just like comics that i've, I've never seen stuff like this before so good these crane figures uh, but dives down, loses loses something into the water and dives down and then gets sucked into a portal. And then, I mean, these pages are so good. Like, all of this crazy abstraction and color here. Again, with that, like, pearlescent paper ink quality. Um, I got a little confused at first because I thought this character went and got transformed into this. But as I read along, I realized, oh, okay. Now we're into a, a second alternate reality um, and you have this character here, Gloopy. This character here with the hat and the hair. Um, feeling like a bit of an outsider in their world. And Gloopy also has an experience where they... Well, well, okay, they run into this kid. This kid chases their thing up into Gloopy's world. And that's where I realized, okay, that those aren't the same person being transmorphed the hat confused me is what it was um, but they meet and it's it's like oh hey you know let me help you go back home look there's there's like a tunnel here and you see the hand stick down through the panel and then it gets transformed again by like this extra dimensional portal so i'm i'm like being able to see this type of non-representational or really abstract like kandinsky type of um, painting in comics and having have a context that works is really cool you know so like a bigger crossover between the quote-unquote fine arts and comic art and the, the characters are like okay the, we've got these portals that we can go through that are taking us into different worlds and they get a little lost and then they have to find their their way back home and gloopy is trying to help this character get back home so as they go through all these different portals it gives molly mendoza a chance to shift her style shift the colors um, shift the approach there's for the most part a pretty consistent style it's mostly color or just stripping out um, you know to where it's only two colors and a, a flatter approach to the art but there are some like as the book goes some more liberties being taken with the style um, there's a scene let's see if I can find it it's it's mostly color changes but there is a scene where it goes into like a more geometric look is that it there eh, kind of but just a real like you can tell the story structure was set up to let molly mendoza play like very again abstract art more ink pen and ink looking stuff no idea how this art was made how much is digital and how much is physical. But page after page after page of gorgeous visuals. And that's that's pretty much the narrative structure of it is, okay, how do we help that original character get back home? So not the deepest story, but 
just so visually cool and so different from anything else I've ever seen. It's like a must-have, like just picking up and flipping through it. You know, I think one or two reads will get you this, this story, but after that, it's just something that you'll always be able to go back to visually. So I, I cannot wait uh, to see more by Molly Mendoza looking on Instagram. She's up to a lot of other stuff, but I, I hope she comes back to, to comics and does more long-form comics like that. And then the, the last book I have by them is is really on my like essentials list read now. Like a must, must read books. The, the other ones are like must have visually compelling books, but this is a must read book in Waves by A.J. Dungo. It's autobiographical, which is something that is hard to sell me on as a must read these days. Um, but this one is so heartbreaking so like raw in its emotion um and then a very interesting structure too so it's about aj like basically losing his girlfriend to uh, a disease um and and it's a memory of their time together and also interspersed with that the history of surfing which sounds weird but a lot of their experiences together um, were surfing and, and a lot of the love he has for her and and her place in their friend group um, has to do with surfing and so the the combination of I don't even want to give away the ending of it I mean obviously she dies and that that's just obvious from the beginning of the book um, but the way he uses the exploration of the history of surfing to deal with his own emotions of having lost his girlfriend and intersperses and flips back and forth between the two. It's just, it's just such a great work. It's really like everything you could hope for out of comics. Um, also, you know, the, the art is like nice understated art. It has kind of the Adrian Tomine vibe to it. I would say, you know, pretty realistic, but clean line and, and simplified. So it becomes animated looking, um, but not stiff at all, very fluid. And the color changes back and forth between the two segments. Is That's always really nice, like visual key without having to be over the top about it. So this is a absolutely phenomenal book. It's absolutely gut-wrenching, make-you-cry, um, emotional story. And and the the unique narrative structure and that he pulls off something that doesn't seem like it should work. Like, let me tell you about the history of surfing while I'm also trying to make you feel sad that my girlfriend died. <laughs> shouldn't shouldn't work, but it does. So this is a must have, and this is another artist where it almost feels like he does other things, and this was just a one off project because his girlfriend asked him to do it before she was dying. It seems like. Um, but I hope he makes more comics because this is, this is what we need more of in comics. So yeah, you can see by me going through this, like there's not a single dud in any of these. There's some of them that have like more strength in art and some of them that have, well, strength in art and story. Um, but there's, yeah, every book that I've got from No Brow has been a great comic and really gives me hope for the future of the medium. There's obviously a ton of talent out there that has stuff to say and, and are getting better and better, younger and younger, with more and more variety of style and more and more variety of voice. And No Brow seems to be the place for that. And, and then you, you put that with the absolutely astonishing production quality. They obviously care about the total unit of the book. Um, this is the publisher I'm most excited about. I will be grabbing any graphic novels that they do from here on out. And then as I can, we'll be going back and grabbing all, all of their back catalog. And then speaking of great production quality and a new publisher on the scene that I'm looking forward to everything else they do, uh, living the line, Sean Robinson's living the line. They're his first book is my collaboration with Dave Sim on The Strange Death of Alex Raymond. I can tell you from working with Sean for a number of years, he's the absolute best in terms of getting artwork 
to reproduce like at the most infinitesimal little detail and uh, I know Sean is also someone who will fight tooth and nail to get the absolute best product and someone who cares about the design of the books and all of that so um, strange death of Alex Raymond we've got the reprint has been done I don't I, I think December 1st will still be our street date um, this is a misprinted copy of the book but the the proper prints will be out soon you can go to your local comic store your local bookstore and have them order it or you can pre-order it on Amazon um, it, it's it's a really you know I can brag about it uh, a little bit because a lot of it's not my artwork and then Sean did such a phenomenal job that um, this is really one of the most gorgeous books you'll pick up. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to <laughs> I, You know, obviously I'm partnered with, with Sean for the YouTube channel, but um, I look forward to anything else he prints because he makes, he makes extremely beautiful books. So thanks for following along. Thanks for supporting us. Take it away, Jack. What's the audience books? Smash!